Hi, I'm Lydia. Welcome to your Sunday yin practice. Really looking forward to guiding you through this hour of yin together. My favourite way to start or close a Sunday. So very nice to have here, have to be here, <laughs> I should say. Um, so let's just get ourselves nice and comfortable and make sure that our setup is really nice and supportive for our yin practice. So I have a nice blanket over my mat, nice and comfy and supportive. You don't need this, but I just think it's a little bit extra, a little bit more cozy for when we're practicing together. Um, as it's a nice restorative practice, we also want to make sure that our environment is nice. So maybe you have some candles, maybe a diffuser. Um, there's also a playlist that should be in the description box here called 75 minutes yin, something similar. We only have 60 minutes together today, um, but the practice is a 75 minute playlist, so you can continue your shavasana into the playlist. So I'll let you know when to press play with that and we can start together. And then maybe if you live with family or friends, you can just ask them nicely just to be a little bit quieter around the house, just so you can really settle into that soothing, rest and digest nature of our restorative yin practice today. And then just making sure you have the props that you need. So I have two yoga blocks here. If you don't have yoga blocks, then maybe you have a coffee table book or something similar that can be quite nice and thick and supportive. And then I am sitting on a yoga bolster, but maybe you just have some pillows from your bed or anything that's nice and soft and supportive that we'll use later in the practice. And then the last thing I'm going to ask you to get that maybe you'll need to pause the video and go and find is a candle and a match. So maybe you need to pause and find those little bits and then we'll meet back together. So just we're going to begin the practice in a comfortable seat. So maybe you're sitting up on a block or a pillow just to elevate the hips a little. And then closing down the eyes for just a moment. And taking a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out of the mouth. <sighs> Just settling in, landing into the body once more. Inhale. Nice breath out. <sighs> And maybe you close your eyes or just a soft gaze, just a few breaths together. Just to help us to settle from that thinking, doing brain and mindset into just feeling and being. Softening the muscles of your face. Little gap between your back teeth. Feeling that expansion of your belly, of your lungs, of your rib cage as you inhale. And then as you exhale, it all comes back in towards centre. Hmm. Deep belly breath. Nothing else to do. Nothing else to think about. Really nice. Just slowing everything down. Nice, and then just blinking, open the eyes. We're gonna take our matchstick or our light or whatever we have. We're gonna burn the light. And then when your match is lit, just finding the way, lighting your candle. And if you don't have a candle, just imagining this. So maybe closing down your eyes and just imagining this glowing flame. And just your eyes will come down to that flicker, the wicker, which is like a lit with fire. And you can soften your shoulders here, soften the body, the belly, the breath. Just bring your full focus to this candle, this burning flame. And allowing this focus of the candle just to ground down the mind, find that anchor, 
slowing down the breath. And the focus in our yin practice today is to boost our immune system, to boost our body, boost our energy levels. And just like when we light our candle, when we light our matchstick or our lighter, we have to first let this matchstick, this light grow and build before we can share it with the candle. So in our yin practice today, we're going to be lighting our own fire first, building up our own energy, our own resource, so that we can sh then share this beauty of our light, of our energy with others around us. Let's take a nice deep breath in here. And a nice sigh out. <sighs> Maybe you just notice that flickering of lights with the breath air in the room, making changes, and then just closing down the eyes, maybe the hands find their way onto the knees, and just tuning in with how the body feels today, without any need for commentary or judgment or criticism, just noticing how you find your body. And we're going to be working a lot into the shoulders and the arms, working with our lung meridian line as part of the Chinese medicine. So just noticing how your shoulders are feeling, working your way from the back of your head, down the neck, the tops of the shoulders, into your shoulder blades, that space between your shoulder blades, the front of the chest, of the shoulders, just noticing what you find and sending your attention to the rib cage that protects your lungs, feeling that expansion as you inhale, mm, that deflation as you exhale, slowing down the breath. Maybe you can still feel or see that flickering of orange light from your candle. And noticing with each breath, with each moment of our practice, we're building our own candle, building our own fire, ready for a new year. And then we're going to gently blink open the eyes. If you have our candle, just moving it to one side. Maybe it can have a nice smell wafting over to you in your practice. And we're going to settle into our first shape. Our first shape of the practice is our Sphinx pose. So for me, I like to use all of the props available here. We're going to come onto our forearms. And the elbows are going to be underneath the shoulders. I like to bring my bolster here, so maybe you have cushions or a bolster, and bring that underneath the rib cage. So the top of the rib cage is supported by the bolster. And then you can bring your blocks into play if you have them. So maybe a block underneath the forehead. And if you have a little more space here, or if you want to open a little further, then maybe you bring the blocks underneath your forearms and settle in here. For me, this feels a little too strong, a bit of pinching in the lower back. So just releasing as you need and just setting up what feels most supportive for your body today. No right or wrong answer here. Just what feels right today. And then taking a breath. And then as you exhale, settling into the shape. Breathing in and out of your nostrils, just a soft breath. Mm. Checking in with the jaw, if there's any clenching, any tightness. Maybe you just give a little wiggle to that area, finding release.
in our yin practice, we hold the shapes for slightly longer, for around three to five minutes. And in this time, we allow the muscles of the body to soften so that we can access the deeper tissues, the ligaments, the joints, the connective tissue that wraps around the body. And when we come to stillness in our shapes, we can really work into those deeper tissues. And it is been studied and shown that in these tissues, we hold a lot of emotions, a lot of stress. And if we don't take time to release this stress from the body, then this can result in dis-ease, disharmony in the body that can lead to poor health. We hold the shapes for a little longer and we cut them to stillness. And just noticing how easy or how challenging it is to come to stillness for you today. Maybe you feel like, oh, I could just go straight back to sleep. I could lie straight back into a little nap. Or perhaps the mind is racing and you feel really busy. You just want to get up and move and fidget. Neither is right or wrong, just noticing where you are today, where the challenge lies in your practice. And if today you find yourself with a busy mind, just allowing the breath to be anchored by an equal breath pattern. So we'll breathe in for the count of four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhaling for four. Exhaling for four. And just continuing this rhythm of breath, four as you inhale. Four as you exhale. Really nice. Nothing else to do. Nothing else to think about. Just feeling and being. Last few breaths here. for our last minute in the shape option to stay where you are or you can come up into seal we're going to press our hands into the mat straightening the arms and maybe if you have a pillow underneath the ribs that provides a little more support and the further the hands are away the more gentle this will feel and the closer the hands are in towards the body the more intense is opening across the heart space so for me this can feel quite strong for the lower back so just bringing your hands to where feels right today. With an exhale, just softening the glutes, the quads, all of the muscles in your body that don't need activation. Softening the muscles of the face. Maybe it even feels like a little massage for the lower belly. So as you breathe in and out, you can feel the belly pressing into the floor and releasing away. Slow, nourishing breath. Nice, two more breaths here. And then gently when your second breath comes to close, coming down to your forearms if you're in your seal, releasing any props that were in your way, so maybe bolsters or blocks, 
and just come into life flat onto your belly, bringing your one cheek onto the mat. Maybe you allow the eyes to close here. Shoulders are rolling forwards. So in between each of our shapes today, we take these pauses, these moments to rebound, so that we can really feel the effects of each shape. We can really receive the practice. <sighs> and you need to sigh, you need to release, just allowing yourself, giving yourself the space to do what the body needs. come to our next shape so just coming back to your sphinx pose just gazing towards the screen just so i can demonstrate the next shape we're going to come back to lying on our belly we're going to bring that left arm out towards the side in a half t-shape coming into our open wing our left cheek is going to rest onto the floor and we're going to roll onto that left side body the right hand can be in front of the body to support and depending on how this feels in the left inner shoulder, you can just keep the right and the left leg stacked on top of each other, or you bring that right foot behind the left knee, right knee is up towards the ceiling. Taking a breath here, just noticing how that feels, and then the right arm might come up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, the right hand comes back behind the body. So softening the muscles here. So coming into the shape, left arm out towards the side, rolling onto that left side body, choosing whether you want that right foot on the floor, knee up towards the ceiling, finding the position of the right hand. And maybe if you have that right foot up towards the ceiling, you just want to have a little bit more support and you can bring your cushion or your bolster in between the thighs. You can have a little bit more opening in the hips as well as the shoulders. But the main focus here is on that inner left shoulder. So there's no need to rush here. Just taking your time to set up and then settling into the shape. Softening your gaze. This can feel like quite a tender spot to the front of the shoulders, especially if we're spending a lot of time sat down or working on a laptop or looking at a phone. There's this rounding forward of the body, this little hunchback warrior, keyboard warrior stance. And this is a really lovely shape just to open up the heart space, working into that shoulder, reversing that daily movement. And maybe you're feeling a little bit more space in the lungs so you can breathe a little deeper into the body. Maybe even sending that breath all the way down to the pelvis, to the bottom of the spine. So as you breathe in, sending that breath all the way down to the base of the spine, into the pelvic bowl. And then as you exhale, breath reverses. Checking in with the body, how you're feeling. Maybe you want to bring that right arm behind you if it's in front of you. 
Maybe you see if you can peel the hips slightly further up towards the ceiling. And if the sensation has become more intense, know that you have the opportunity to roll or unravel slightly from the shape. But know that tingling, that discomfort is normal here. And allowing that deep belly breath to tell the body that we're safe to be here. The shape is safe. The body is safe. Last few moments here. And gently we're going to release from the shape. So if you have the bolster in between your legs, just moving the bolster out the way, stacking that right leg back on top of the left. If that right arm is behind you, just bring it underneath the right shoulder. And we're gonna roll back to the front body, resting on the right side of your face. Maybe arms come alongside the body, or just creating a little pillow with your hands support, supporting the head. <sighs> Settling in. Receiving the shape. And just awareness of the left side compared to the right, giving you a bit of space in the left shoulder, maybe sensations of tingling. And gently moving into the shape on the other side. So maybe you need to find a little, a little bit more space here, maybe wiggling over to the other side of your mat. But if you don't have space to bring your arms out into a T shape, you can also bring the arms into a cactus. So either that right arm is in a cactus 90 degrees, or that right arm is out long, out wide to the right side. If you used a bolster or a cushion on the other side, just moving it to the other side of the mat there to support you. Beginning with that half T shape, resting on the right side of your face, rolling onto the right side body. Maybe that left leg is coming behind you, left knee up towards the ceiling. <sighs> Just taking a breath here, allowing the tissues of your body to soften. Maybe the left hand is supporting in front of the chest, or we can just reach that left arm up and then gently resting behind the lower back. Option to bring that pillow in between the knees. And closing down the eyes, softening of the face. Breathing into the pelvis, really grounding breath. In our yin practice, we stay very close to the ground. And when we're close to the ground, this is a really nurturing, grounding place to be, helping us settle into our rest and digest our soothing part of our nervous system. So we can restore and repair, recharge our batteries, Allow that candle, our own candle fire to burn and grow. And in Chinese medicine, the lungs act as our barrier, our protective layer from the outside world to our inside world. Taking in oxygen from outside and transferring that into energy 
and chi for the body. It means that our lungs act as our immune system, the shield from the outside world. And if there's disharmony in our lungs, then we are more prone to catching colds and flu and having a cough or sniffles. So by coming into these shapes, by working into our lung meridian line and by boosting our energy, boosting our defensive chi, we're building up that protective shield, that protective layer. So even in the winter months, we can know that we are strong enough, that we are healing, that we're healthy, that we're not going to be affected by colds and coughs. And you can stay where you are in your shape or making any adjustments that you feel you might need. If it feels like there's space in the right shoulder, maybe you can explore also bending that right knee so that both feet are on the floor and both knees are up towards the ceiling. And if this feels a little too strong for you, then just straightening that right leg back out. Last few breaths. And then finding release. Left hand coming in front of the body if it's not already. Straightening that top leg and rolling gently onto your belly. Maybe the arms come alongside the body and then resting on the left cheek. Shoulders rolling forwards. Maybe feel a little bit more openness across the heart space. Just taking this moment to rest, to receive. Without well, anywhere to be, anything else that needs to be done. Carving out this time simply just to be. Nice, and you can keep the eyes closed, just gently rolling onto the left side body. Just taking a few breaths in your fetal position. Maybe you support the head with that right hand. And then gently pressing your way to a comfortable seat. Maybe that block underneath your seat for a moment, just coming to a cross leg, easy pose. I'm just going to activate a few acupressure points before we continue into our next yin shape. So we're going to take the tips of our fingers and we're going to tap along the sternum here. And you can keep that softness in the eyes and the face. And just tapping along the sternum. Up and down, just a gentle pressure. This is connected to our immune system. So tapping here is boosting our immune system. So you're breathing nice and deeply. And maybe you want to repeat to yourself, I am healing. I am healthy. I am healing. I am healthy. Really nice. And just maybe a little rubbing, massaging this area may feel a little tender. Next one we're gonna take we're going to bring our hands into little pincers and tap underneath your collarbone, just around the centre of your collarbone, just underneath. 
And again, finding that softness in your face, tapping here. And this is activating our kidney channel. And the kidneys are associated with our energy levels, but also with the emotion of fear. And often with our health and with the environment that we're in, there can be a lot of fear coming up. So tapping into this energy line, and maybe you choose to repeat with me, move forward with courage. I move forward with courage. These are really nice affirmations to work with. I'm healthy, I'm healing, I move forward with courage. And then gently releasing that tapping, maybe a little rubbing of that tender area. <sighs> just allow the hands to settle onto the knees, softening the eyes if they open, just taking a breath here. And a breath out of the mouth. <sighs> And just allowing that tapping to settle into the body. Maybe a bit of a surging of energy, a bit more life, a lifting of the spirit. Nice. And then we're going to move into our next shape, into a butterfly. It's one of my favourite shapes to come into in our yin practice. So we're going to bring the pads of the feet together. The knees are going to be out wide. And maybe you need your block or your pillow nearby. If you notice that you're rolling backwards rather than rolling forwards or sitting forwards, then maybe you need to prop a pillow underneath your bottom or even roll up your mat or your blanket just so the hips are elevated and a little more space to fold forwards. So find that nice long spine here. And then as you exhale, we're gonna curl forwards, allowing the spine to curl. Allowing the head to drop down and then just settling into a place that feels just right for you in the Goldilocks position. And then maybe you stay here just allowing gravity to support you or you can bring your bolsters into play. So I like to bring my blocks and then rest the bolster or the cushions on top. And then you can maybe support your head with your forearm. If you have to be, if you feel like you need a proper little higher up, then maybe you bring your bolster onto a higher level, supporting the head, palms facing up, or just allowing gravity to be there to support you. One position, one variation is not better than another, simply just what your body needs today. Settling into the shape. And maybe you're feeling this in the inside of the legs, maybe into the lower back, the length of the spine. Hmm. Forward folds being really grounding. Whenever we feel a lot of fear or stress in the body, Feelings of overwhelm coming into a forward fold is really supportive. And focusing on that deep belly breath, breathing into the pelvis. Consciously softening the muscles of the body. Coming into this state of rest, of recharging. And when we create space for rest, we allow the opportunity to recharge our batteries, to allow our fire, our flame to burn a little brighter so that others around us can see us shine bright and have that positive glow. If your mind is wandering away, just notice what is taking your energy, your attention today. And then ask yourself, is it worth it? 
big exhalation. And then coming back to your breath, coming back to the sensations in your body. Adjusting the props as you need. Maybe you notice while the breath has softened, the muscles have relaxed, that the tissues of the body allow you to sink a little deeper. Maybe you can just walk the hands a little further forwards. Feel the chest melting a little closer towards the earth. <sighs> And just that feeling of settling in, of landing into your shape, this place of safety and comfort. last few moments here so just checking in and just asking yourself how can you do less here how can you do less and maybe that's a physical adjustment or maybe just stepping back from a certain thought pattern And then with your next exhale, just gently going to peel all the way up. If you have any props, just moving them to the side. Bring your hands to the outside of the knees. Just bring the knees together, feet to the floor. We're going to roll down onto our backs. And just gently windscreen wipe the knees from side to side here. Really slowly, no need to rush. Maybe moving with the breath, so inhaling, legs move towards the left. Exhaling, legs move towards the right. Releasing any tension from your lower back. And when the body calls for stillness, just taking your rebound in your Shavasana. So that the legs can come out long. Or if you want to provide a little more support for the lower back, then just bring the feet out wide and the knees in together. Any sighs, any releases. Feeling the natural curve of the spine return. And the softness in the muscles of your face. Just while we take a few more breaths here, just bring your thumbs to the inside line of your eyebrows and massaging your thumbs along the length of your brows. So beginning with the thumbs on the inside of your eyebrows, massaging all the way to the outside of the brows, maybe taking it towards the top of the ears. Anywhere that's tension, so maybe into the jaw, massaging along the length of your jawline, 
really paying more attention to that space where the upper jaw and the lower jaw meets. Nice, and then just gently releasing the hands back down, taking a breath. Just allowing that soothing nature of touch to be felt by the body. And gently rolling back to the left side of the body, the yin side of the body. Maybe taking a few breaths here. And then in your own time, we'll press up to a seat. So no need to rush. And joining me sat to the top of your mat. So the next shape we're going to take is deer pose, a slightly more restorative yin shape. So lovely for this practice of recharging our energy and boosting our immune system. So we're going to begin with our pillow or our bolster on the mat. And if you don't have pillows or bolsters, then just having your blocks nearby and they can support you as well. We're going to bring our left hip right next to the pillows so that your thigh is parallel to your mat. And then the legs are gonna be in a little zigzag. So the left leg is bent, and then that right leg is just bent on top. So a little zigzaggly shape. <laughs> and you're gonna be facing towards the right side of your room, so that your left hip is by the pillows. And as you inhale, we're gonna lengthen the spine. As you exhale, we're gonna twist round to the left and then folding over the pillows, the props, resting the chest down onto your props. And then either you're gonna rest on the left cheek or you're gonna rest that right cheek down, continuing into the twist. So it just depends on how that feels for you. So setting yourself up, bring your left hip right next to the pillows, zigzagging your legs, inhaling to lengthen the spine, Exhale, we're going to trail, softening over the space and then choosing whether you want to rest onto the left cheek or the right cheek. And you can change halfway if that feels supportive for you. And if you need to bring in more, more blocks or props to bring you up a little closer, bring the floor a little closer to you, then doing that as you need. <sighs> Just settling into the shape, softening the breath, softening the belly. Carving out this time for rest. Resting doesn't need to be earned. Resting doesn't make you lazy. In fact, rest is an essential part of being human. This yin and yang element. We must complement the action, the doing, the socialising, the working with periods of stillness, of being. <sighs> so really allowing the shape to support you in that place of rest. And as you exhale and soften, maybe there's a sense of coming home. Returning back to balance.
And returning to that equal breath if the mind begins to wander. So breathing in for four, breathing out for four. Three more inhales, three more exhales. And when your third breath comes to close, just gently begin to peel your way all the way back up. I'm going to bring the hands around and I'm going to twist over to the other side. So just gently picking up your hips, moving them towards the opposite side of your mat so that you can turn all the way around and the right hip is by your props, your support. And the legs are zigzag in the other way. So the right leg is bent with the right foot on the inside of the left leg. From here, we're gonna find length in the spine and then as you exhale, folding over your props. Maybe you need to move your props a little bit just to line up with your body. And then taking that variation of left cheek or right cheek resting on the props. Taking any weight out of the arms, the shoulders, allowing the chest to be fully supported. Maybe giving a little wiggle to the jaw, releasing any tension here, just correcting. Softening the belly and your breath. With each breath in, we're building that shield, that protective layer that protects our inner world from the outer world. And with it, with every exhale, the body is softening and relaxing. So with each inhale, we're supporting our immune system. And with each exhale, we're recharging our batteries, our energy levels, softening. Breathing in to restore and breathing out to relax. Just noticing where you can do less. Maybe soften the breath, the thoughts. Last few moments in the shape.
and take a nice big inhale here and a sigh out of the mouth <sighs> and gently peeling the way out of the shape releasing moving the props away to the side coming to lie down on your back coming into your rebound maybe the knees are out wide or the feet are out wide knees are together or the legs are in shavasana your choice Feeling the spine resting into the mat. Receiving those restorative shapes. And just noticing what impact it's had on your mind, your body. And the last thing we're going to do before our Shavasana going to use our block here so if you don't have your block and you have that thick book then grabbing that we're going to bring our block to the second height and we're going to pop this block underneath our head so maybe let me need to release your hairband and we're going to bring the block so the bottom of the block lines up with the base of our hairline and then holding the block with both hands just to support the neck here we're going to gently roll the head from side to side, really slowly here. And any time you find an area of tightness, of tension, just holding the head in place here, or just small micro movements side to side. A myofascial release, so muscle fascia release, is a really effective way to release tension. And you can also explore when the head comes back to centre, just bring the block a little centimetre higher or lower. And just exploring how that changes the sensation of the movement. We often carry a lot of tension here when we're sat down a lot or looking down at phones and laptops. And it can lead to a lot of headaches and brain fog. So this is a really nice exercise to take daily. And it's interesting to see how the sensation changes when you're dealing with a lot of stress or if you're on your menstrual cycle or feeling very tired, the sensation reflects that. Softening the jaw and maybe you bring the block onto a slight angle so the edge of the block is pressing into the back of the skull. Last few breaths here. When you feel ready, just bring the head back to centre, lifting the head away and just popping the block to the side or the book away, resting the hands onto the belly. <sighs> Maybe you're feeling a little clearer in the mind or a little more settled. And then gently journeying it into our Shavasana. So maybe if you have pillows, you bring those underneath the knees, supporting the lower back. Maybe you bring uh, pillows or blankets to rest on the body, a little more grounding and soothing. Bring the arms out wide, legs out nice and wide, carving out space for your body. And taking a nice deep breath in. And a sigh out of the mouth. <sighs> Once more, inhale. Sighing out. <sighs> nice. Mm. 
and just inviting the mind to where the body is in a state of complete rest. And I'll be here to bring you back out in a few moments time. Slowly coming back to your body. Maybe take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Maybe licking your lips or swallowing. Maybe rolling the head gently from side to side, just as we did with the block. And when you feel ready, Maybe wrapping the arms around yourself, giving yourself a really nice big hug, squeezing the shoulders or the shoulder blades. Mm. Maybe you imagine hugging someone today that really needs it. And maybe today that person is you. And then when you're ready, rolling to the left side body. And just taking a few breaths here. It takes courage to be still. To step back from doing and simply be. It takes courage to be still. So thank yourself for carving out this time for rest, for being, for boosting your immune system and recharging your batteries. Mm. And just settling into that Sunday slow feeling, gently coming back into the body, and gently pressing up to a comfortable seat.
No need to rush. Maybe the eyes stay closed. And we'll meet by bringing our left hand to our heart space, right hand to our lower belly. Feeling our heart beating underneath our left hand. And the belly rising and falling with each breath underneath your right hand. Just connecting back with your body and taking a moment of gratitude for your body, your home. Gratitude for your health. Or maybe anything else that you're grateful for from your week. And then we'll close our practice by bringing our hands together at heart center. And then we'll bow our head towards our hands. And together we say Namaste. So thank you so much for practicing with me today. It's been lovely to guide you through this immune boosting sequence. My name is Lydia or Flow with Lydia on Instagram. So I'll add my uh, Instagram and YouTube and all of those other little bits and pieces down below. Um, but if you'd like to practice with me again, I would love to 